Everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm talking today with Ryan. Hello. Hi. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm doing well. Another relatively brand new MVP. Always exciting to uh, to get to know folks as they join in to get get some of your backstory. But for people that don't know you or your company, what you do, where you are, why don't you give us that back down, back background? Sure. Yeah. So uh, my name is Ryan Mangan. Um, just recently been a, an MVP. I work for AppCure, the CTO of AppCure, which is a, an application packaging migration and transformation company uh, based in the United Kingdom. Excellent. Where, where at in the UK? Yeah, yeah. So, well, you know, not in London, as everybody seems to orientate everything yeah. you know, in the UK is London. No. So I'm currently based just... Um, just outside of York, um, the famous iconic kind of thing is the York Minster. Um, but obviously, in terms of the company, it's, it's, it's global, but, you know, across the country as well. Sure. Yeah. So or countries. Yeah, but countries. So, so, yeah. So do you, have a, do you have an office over in the U.S. as well? No, no. So everything's here. But, you know, we're, like, we're in the world of remote, as you know, and you know where we're going with all this conversation yeah. is, um, you know, you don't really you don't really need an office anymore. It can be it can be a virtual phone system. It can be virtual anything, really, whatever you want. That's always, that's going to be interesting. That's a great topic. I, I'll, maybe we'll come back to that on what's <laughs> happening with virtualization. Because I mean, the cloud, I mean, like we both work in that world, but I've worked as a remote person for, you know, for uh, in-person companies for the, over the last decade. And so I've, you know, I was part of an acquisition and then, you know, with, I was based in Seattle, my company was based in Boston. And, and so it's, it's been that way for the last decade. And so a lot of the transition hasn't been really been a transition for me uh just because it's what the way that i've been working for so long but uh so what, what's kind of your your experience what what are you talking about what are you passionate about right now and then maybe we would come back to the customers so um yeah well i've been busy for quite a few years on the community side of it um so i think for the last what 10 years i've been producing blog posts you know speaking content uh, workarounds the kind of areas that is you know the old end user computing side of it but um before i go down into end, end user computing I'll, I'll start with a little bit more of a background of myself so it kind of builds up a bigger conversation so i, I believe and i actually started my career in the in the british military so working with, with um with telecommunications uh, construction and um and believe in explosives so i had quite a broad kind of start of my career and when i left the military i went into um into kind of it as it is today, you know, more network engineering. But, and but I have to ask that. with that combination, I mean, were you like <laughs> installing desktop computers, hooking up phone lines and defusing bombs? Like what is that, that combination? Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of random. So, our, so the kind of uh, regiment or the, the core uh, was the Royal Engineers. So it's quite a prestigious um, reg, well, you know, kind of core as we call them. Um, and um, you start off as trainers like an infantier, so you do your infantier training first, and then you um, you become a royal engineer, which is the bridges, the civil engineering, the kind of explosive element of it, you know, for like cutting uh, bridges, cutting trees, you know, using various different methods to kind of clear obstacles on the battlefield. Right. And then the third, you get a trade, and the trade I chose was communications in the end, um, which was, uh, you know, it's kind of followed me through. But to be fair, I, I built my first PC when I was 11 years old, so I've always had that that technology thing in the background. And obviously when I left the military, it put me in good stead. Uh, obviously today I sit here as an MVP and various other kind of um, business interests that show I've established and built over the years. But yeah, so I started off in the military and then came into technology. And then um, I, I kind of ended up specializing in remote desktop services. Um, you know, the, the kind of uh, problematic um, challenges of scaling uh, and the pain points which Microsoft have fixed by releasing um, Azure Virtual Desktop in the cloud platform. Yeah, well, that's yeah. It, look, that's been an interesting space. I've never been on that side of of IT. I've yeah. always been more on the product program management side of things. But of course, all my friends that are like in that side to see the evolution of desktop support and external user support and the distributed team, geographically dispersed team, you know, support. I mean, it's dramatically changed over the last decade. I mean, it's just it's a, just a different thing altogether. 
Well, I mean, the, the kind of the, how I got into it. So I started off fixing networking virtualization and then um, people wanted, I worked for a group of colleges and they effectively, um, they had Citrix um, presentation server. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was very basic and they wanted to change it. And we went out to suppliers and they came back with these ludicrous prices. And I said, you know what? Let's have a look at remote desktop services, you know, 2012 at the time, the first, you know, it's just been released, um, you know, and with TechEd and stuff, if you remember back, I used to attend yep. some of them, you know, that's where I met Freak Beardson, if you've ever spoke with Freak before. Um, anyway, long story short of it is, um, I ended up concocting my own solution for about one eighth of the price of what the supplier put together and was actually featured in the Microsoft Education uh, blog, uh, where we were able to basically 200 users and deliver virtual desktops using remote desktop services 2012. And, um, you know, from that point, I realized how problematic and challenging the technology could be and some of the problems and started blogging and producing that content uh, on Ryan Manger's IT blog. And today I, I sit here with uh, what's about 3.5 million, you know, hits and views, 20,000 views a month plus. Um, and it's just, a lot of it is on that sort of thing, you know, like fixing some of them dreaded problems that were there because, a lot of these uh, challenges you don't see until you start using the environment for, you know, in anger or over a period of time. And obviously, you know, yeah, just kind of writing. It's like writing, you know, you don't know why you're writing it, but it's useful for you and others. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's, it's yeah, strange. Yeah. Well, I find it interesting, too, is I was just looking at my uh, my monthly stats this morning uh, from my personal blog. And of course, I write in other locations as well. But I've seen that, that the, the content that does the best, even though. I primarily write about more I'm on the strategy side of the business. So I talk about more business programmatic marketing topics. I mean, things like that around mostly the Microsoft ecosystem, but still blog posts that I wrote a year or two ago, which is very much like how to go and deploy this. And I do, I, I talk about the why I always like walk through, this is what you do. Here's the features that are available. And then I'd say, like, this is why this is important. This is how it fits in with SharePoint teams, the, your windows in general, and your strategy. But those are still the most heavily trafficked blog posts. And, and so I know that the, you know, that my marketing team would say, well, like, go and write more of that content. I'm like, I'll do it when it makes sense. It's not my primary thing that I'm focused on. But that is a, it's a common story that I hear from new MVPs that you know, to go out and, and talk about, like, break fix type topics. Like something went wrong. I went and researched it. This is what I came up with. I paste glued and paste this together may not be perfect architecturally, but it solved this immediate need is a great place to begin within the community. And everybody has those kinds of stories. Yeah. And, um, you know, as I progressed, you know, I produced more and more content. I had the opportunity to publish, um, uh, ebooks on Microsoft publications on Azure Virtual Desktop, Citrix and Microsoft working together, VMware and Microsoft working together, and um, you know it put me in good stead. Really, it, it, if you think about it, it was it was a indirect career uh, milestone, stepping stone. I didn't realize what I was doing at the time, but over a period of time, I developed new skills without realizing I did it. Uh, and it's not because you know I was trying to go after the MVP or go after all of the other accolades, the V-Expert and things I've done. It was just, you know, I am obsessed with technology. You know, when I found out that my car had, you know, electronic gearbox and all these other things, I wanted to know exactly how it worked. And I didn't want, I didn't like the fact that the, the dealer knew more about how to reset things like the, the essential locking on the system than I did. So I went out of my way and I found out how it all worked. And it's just, you know, the person I am, I'm inquisitive and like to understand things, right? And yeah, you know, so, I suppose if you're passionate about something, um, as I am in, in the technology space, you'll always succeed because, you know, it's what drives you. If you're not interested in that subject, like, you know, certain things at school at the time, um, you know, I can't remember what it was. It was to certain subjects which I couldn't stand because it was just so, um, you know, monotone and and um, and bland, I think the phrase is. Um, yeah, I just didn't enjoy it. But obviously, as yeah. you go on in your career, you find these areas which really draws you to it and you spend more and more time. Whereas, you know, you, you know yourself, if, how many jobs do you find in your life? You think, oh, I'm going to put that off. I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'll wait. I'll put that on the bottom of the pile. And then you get to that point where, oh, I need to do it now. I'm not going to look forward to this. It's, it's them sort of things, right? And well, it, it's some, kind of a lesson for everybody. 
I was for years, I was a, a runner and I've, uh, uh, and one of the things that runners, just like cyclists have the same passion where they like, they love the hills. Well, the hills are the hardest part, you know, we're exerting <laughs> yourself, but there's, uh, you know, there's something about, you know, you know, having that constant tension, you know, in our, in our career of going and, and, and then getting over those hills, you know, solving those hard problems. And there's certain amount of pride and you can, you can feel the development happening while you're doing that. You know that, hey, this is going to be something where it's going to get easier. I'm going to be able to go and, and do this. And so hard things can become really fun. And that's a lot about you know technology to go and figure things out, ask the questions. I always tell people too, like be very careful, be transparent about what you don't know. Like don't just be inquisitive, ask questions. Uh, it's very much this is my Ted Lasso commentary. You know, ask questions. <laughs> Um, and, and open up to collaborate with others on what those answers are, you're going to learn a lot quicker. You're going to the solutions that you end up delivering, no matter what your role on are going to be stronger are going to be better. And you're going to build contacts elsewhere. So uh, kind of on that, I, I, one, something I wanted to ask you. So uh, enterprise mobility as a focus for MVP, what is that, you know, it, it, what, what's included within that? So shall I um shall I kind of open it up? So obviously yeah. I do the endpoint. Uh, I do the I do the Azure Virtual Desktop and the endpoint, you know, autopilot. But um, let's just throw in the mix MSIX and MSIX App Attach as well. So they're two different, completely separate, and, and the development side. So I spent a bit of time out before my MVP days as a, as a as a CTO at AppCure, working with the product teams at Microsoft. So the likes of Stefan Giorgio and, and Andrew Clinic, I've had the opportunity to kind of talk and, and discuss things with, with these really uh, in clever people, you know, uh, and who, who drive the bus, you know, uh, including John Vincel, I should mention him as well. Um, so it's kind of bizarre because I'm, I'm on one side, I'm, I'm talking about M, uh, enterprise mobility, you know, autopilot, um, endpoint manager, system center, configuration manager, and yeah, remote desktop services, Windows 365, and Azure Virtual Desktop. When you look at this now, and when we look 10 years ago, the whole kind of you know, ecosystem just evolved, right? It's just like, wow, we've just created another 10,000 different potential jobs here. Um, you know, it's such a massive topic, but the problem we've got with these workspaces, we'll call them, is applications. So what we do um, at AppCure is we solve the, the, the we, people call them legacy apps, I call them applications. You know, if they run on the modern operating system, it's an application, right? Um, so not only am I looking at um, enterprise mobility, I'm also looking at the app development, the MSIX, the MSIX app attack, because we can now deploy a workspace in five minutes, right? Cloud has accelerated these amazing opportunities for us. We don't have to spend weeks ordering tin and plugging it all in and spending all them years doing all that hard work for it to be ripped out again. Um, you click a few buttons, run a few ARM templates and off you go. The problem is, and it still relies to date, is the applications. You know, how long does it take to get them apps moved? What are the challenges with them applications? 16-bit um, doesn't run on 64. How do we challenge that? How, you know, do we really want to run type two hypervisors? You know, these massive list of problems, right? And, um, and this is where I think, you know, from a, a uniqueness uh, from from me, I'm looking at things completely different. Um, so I'm not just enterprise mobility. I'd say I, I'd say I'm Windows apps as well. I would yeah. say that I'm, it's, it's hard, but uh, you know, well, there, I'm covering a lot of ground. There is really a blurring of lines between the, those areas. Yes. I mean, even like if you think <laughs> about you know enterprise mobility and where the focus is for a lot of those folks um, around with business applications, with data platform for uh, uh, you know the the enterprise administration. What is that one? The um, the data center uh, side of things as yes. well. I mean, yeah. there's blurring between those different things. That's one of the, and for folks that aren't familiar with the, in the MBA, MVP program, we're like, I'm an office apps and services. I was started as a SharePoint. I was one of the first to transition over to Office 365 and then Office servers and services and then Office apps and services. But you think of like SharePoint and Teams and Yammer and the Office suite and kind of everything that's that's within that. There's a broad range of topics, mm -hmm. but there increasingly have been people that have been on the office apps and services side that are now uh, business applications because they've gotten into the power platform side or straight over into dynamics and doing more on that side. Uh, and so there's once you become an MVP and you're interacting with people that are kind of cross specialty, you may find that 
you are writing and doing less and less and less around the topic that you became an MVP around, but the volume of uh, you know content and things that you're doing, contributions and the community involvement become broader and broader and broader, which is fine. It's perfectly fine. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting that way. I mean, like, like anything, I mean, you, you come in you, you, with a new role as you start learning about something and not that you have to master that area entirely to become, you know, like the expert, uh, maybe within your organization, but then you start learning about other things that are connected into what your core doing. And there's, you're, it's going to open up paths to, to go and learn. I mean, that's one of the things that I love the most about the MVP program is taking advantage of that uh, is, is reaching out and finding out about new areas helps you in your current role, your current company helps you expand as far as your community contributions. So if you started like looking into other areas of you, uh, besides saying, yeah. you know, signing up and doing this and getting to know me and office apps and services person over in, you know, Utah in the U S <laughs> uh, getting to know people kind of cross workload. Have you started to kind of expand your view of what you'll be focusing on next? So, yeah, I mean, I've always been a technologist. So I've always looked at the bigger picture. So I do know um, quite a bit about the dynamic side of things. I do know um, a lot about teams and direct routing with Microsoft Teams. So my, my experience in the networking and all the rest of it kind of, I have done through my career lots of different things. Um, today, I'm obsessed with, I don't know why, Windows 365, Endpoint Manager and, and Azure Virtual Desktop and the app side of it because of what I do in the day to day. Because, you know, it was said in, I think it was, don't quote me, it might be completely wrong, but I'll give you the figures anyway, with a caveat that I might be wrong. Uh, I think they were saying that there's 176 million different applications out there. Microsoft stated in 2018, I believe. I'll double check later. Mm. Um, and there was then another 176 million variations. And, you know, every developer is different, they're written different ways. And right. it's fascinating to see how it all comes together because it's a part of the puzzle. But in terms of, um, like, be having access to all these new areas in the MVP program because I'm a very positive person right I always look the pros the cons and in betweens I'll never ever say a product's rubbish I'll never I'll never ever you know be um one of them pessimistic people I'll always give yeah. you the good the bad the ugly uh, uh, you know there's no there's no bad it's product me, it's meeting product. somebody's requirements somebody's outcomes somewhere it's delivering on you've got so. it you're right, right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you know, you, nothing's ever perfect. If someone could ever give me, you know, utopia, you know, that's me done in my career. And I'm, I'm never, we'll, we'll never get utopia because these requirements, these demands, these change every day. You know, it's a, it's a revolving door, someone once said to me, right? You know, and same with the SharePoint, right? On your side, you know, you'll deliver something in SharePoint, you'll do a solution. And then next minute, that, that requirement changes, right? And you've probably gone through your career exactly the same way. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that's part of, uh, you know, an operations view of the world, a change management view of the world is that, uh, and, I, and I find myself saying this a lot, I just did this in a, mentioned this in another discussion, I think yesterday or day before, is that, you know, look, we look at everything that we experience, especially in technology, through the lens of our understanding today. What happens is you learn something new, you pick up the new technology, you then come up with questions that you would have never known to have asked before you learn that new thing. And so my, my understanding of what I need in my role, what my business needs, what I think, where I think things are going from an industry, from a competitive landscape, change as I learn more and I experience these things. And so it is, that's one of the things I love about IT is that it constantly changes. That, you know, even though you could be at high performing, then the needs of the business change, the needs of your customers change, the, 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 the new technology that comes out all of which can impact everything status quo. And so it's the skill we need to develop in this world is at getting better at change management, getting better at, uh, you know, how do we react to change as it happens, not playing continually catch up. There's always going to be catch up to, I feel like I'm up to speed on that. Like that'll, that'll you might have that for a day or two and then suddenly feel you're behind again which is okay. Just learn to operate at that different speed. And, and I think, you know, and just kind of finishing off on the, the area of like what the MVP kind of the product management meetings and things, you know, the opportunities, which are, I mean, in the space of one month, you know, to kind of go into these sessions and meet these new people, uh, interact, you know, and because I've got a lot of 
friends in the community uh, you know I, I enjoy socializing i'm a human being at the end of the day humans love socializing unless you're a hermit but most of us are not but um you know it's opened so many doors in the sense of we can start looking and the thing about microsoft is it's so big people don't realize actually how big microsoft is yeah. there's you know there's specific teams which have to all kind of sync up in so many different ways to make this whole ecosystem work and unless you actually see it from behind the scenes you don't realize actually how complicated it can it can really be and it's the same with all global you know software companies as, as a, you, you all know yourself but um yeah honestly it's been a, it's an eye-opener in one sense but it's great in another because it opens these new world of opportunities not just for me but for the communities and also the things I write about and research and document on. You know, recently I did some performance testing on Microsoft Azure, the the, uh, the different SKUs for virtual machines, right, for, for desktops. And, and it came back that, you know, from the desktop testing for, for running Microsoft Office applications and things, um, it showed that using AMD Epic CPUs was much better than Intel, right? And obviously cloud's evolving and cloud can be anything because it can be any data center. You know, that will change. But it really kind of was interesting to see that you know servers might be great on intel but when we're building virtual desktops we should be using amd so that you know like i said it's um you never get bored do you you know every nope. two years there's a significant change and it's great because you're always interested in your job whereas you know some it's probably like cars right new car technology comes out the mechanics probably get farmed up on the new stuff every year it, yep. it keeps you going doing the same thing every day which is you know monotonous you know repeti repetition is, is quite um frustrating so you know honestly I, I couldn't be in a better position in terms of my career and enjoyment but um there's still i believe a lot of problems in the in industry which we all need to solve and i think the communities especially the microsoft community how vast and large it is are um, really kind of contributing i mean have you seen how much content now flies across linkedin it's crazy oh yeah uh, there's new content weekly and then there's all these new user groups state uh, you know starting up you know, it's it's pretty impressive. But like I said, you know, um, did you see the some of the Ignite announcements this week where they spoke about um, the, like the the Microsoft spin on the metaverse, as it were, or this yep. virtual world? Yeah, the Microsoft I mesh. Mean, yep. Yeah. So what what does that um, what does that look like in three years' time? Right. That's that's right. what I said straight away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, we I mean, look, at a, a square screen. You think of like uh, in Microsoft Loop, which is the new, which is the uh, the fluid, the the the. Uh, uh, you know, the, the dynamic applications across that. I mean, look, there's there's so many things that are constantly changing in every part of technology like you. I mean, that's that's why I'm I'm so passionate about it. And it it's uh, it's very supportive of those of us with ADD, ADHD. Uh, you know, there's, there's constantly. <laughs> yeah, something true. Yeah, yeah. You know, but but as technologists, you know, like I, I'm excited to go and see new things like I will go to locally. There will be an event like I was telling somebody about how I went to kind of a half day of VR AR number of vendors that came in and were demonstrating and some this is like a year and a half so it was pre COVID so almost two years ago. Uh, it, it some of it was just kind of like yawn I've seen it what's what's new and a couple of them where I'm just like oh my gosh, like this, this is amazing I can see the business application of it today. Like what, what, what are you doing? What's, what's the go to market around this? And, you know, it even it has nothing to do with anything that I'm working in other than it's just exciting technology to see it at firsthand. I feel like that is so much about my day to day. And that's one of the things I love about, you know, I can't go and consume it all. I'm focused on the things that I'm focused on. One of the reasons why I started this interview series was to, I kind of, you know, get it like the information through these interviews of other things I should be paying attention to, or just experience it through others, you know, th in this way. But just to kind of you know keep up on, you know, all of the different areas within the stack and what's important and what we should be looking at. So, well, listen, I, Ryan, I really appreciate uh, your time and and uh, sharing the information. People want to find out more about you, get in touch with you. What are the best ways to reach you? Yeah, so my Twitter handle is uh, Ryan Mangan, so R Y Mangan um, on Twitter, and um, my blog is Ryan Mangan's IT blog. So you can't get that wrong. So it's Ryan Mangan's IT blog dot com, even though I'm in the UK, right? Yeah, global presence. That's right, <laughs> exactly. But we'll have everything out. So if you if you find this video out on YouTube, of course, you go to BuckleyPlanet.com, and you'll be able to find, of course, through through SEO, you'll be able to find this this information out there. It's uh, 
SEO likes when there's a blog post, a video and a podcast all, you know, tagged the same way <laughs> it raises us up in the, in the SEO. So, but Ryan really appreciate your time and getting to know you today and hopefully see you at uh, the next MVP summit. But thanks, Christian. Appreciate it. Wow.